Hey there, you ever notice that the Carolina Panthers refuse to make sense as a franchise? See, most franchises have a straightforward path in terms of win-loss record. Either they're good for consecutive years, great for consecutive years, mediocre, bad, very bad, or generationally bad for consecutive years. Sorry, but that's just outside the Panthers' comfort zone. In their 30 plus years of existence, the Carolina Panthers have operated under their own rules, creating a path that, in video game terms, is open-ended. You'll see what I mean once we go over an abridged history of the Carolina Panthers franchise. The Panthers started play in 1995, and they made NFL history by becoming the first team to play in overtime in their debut. They started 0-5 and were every bit as bad as you'd expect an expansion team to be. And then they won 7 of their last 11 to finish 7-9, and nine, the best debut record from an expansion team the NFL has ever seen. Yeah, makes sense. Cool. The 7-9 and nine start from head coach Dom Caper's squad was remarkable. Perhaps they can inspire a little bit more confidence in 1996 with an 8-8 record, or maybe even 9-7. and seven. How about 12-4? and four? Yeah, a team in their second year of existence casually won 12 games, earned a first-round bye, sent 8 players to the Pro Bowl, and had 6 players on the Associated Press all-pro team. Their defense allowed the second fewest points and the third fewest touchdowns, while their 60 sacks led the league. Also, a big shout out to the late Hall of Fame linebacker Sam Mills, who had a career season at the age of 37 and was the inspiration for the team's iconic keep pounding motto. This team ended the Cowboys dynasty of the 90s and made it to the NFC Championship, again in their second year of existence. That only raises the question, how far would they go in 1997? Seven and nine. That's suboptimal, but I'm noticing a pattern here. Seven and nine in year one, 12 and four in year two, seven and nine in year three. So if you're following me here, in 1998, the Panthers finished four and 12. Because of that, Dom Capers was fired and replaced by former 49ers head coach George Seifert. So after a 4-12 start, it's only natural that in 1999, a quarterback that averaged 8.4 touchdown passes per season in his first 10 seasons throws 36 touchdowns and leads the Panthers to an 8-8 eight eight record, just barely missing the playoffs in a weak NFC. We're going to skip over the Ray Carruth <coughs> incident. Trust me, if you want to have a good day, don't look it up. To head to the 2000 season where the Panthers regressed by one game to finish 7-9. Steve Bureline went from setting franchise records for passing yards and touchdowns in 1999 to throwing 19 touchdowns and 18 interceptions in 2000. It probably had something to do with Bureline being sacked 62 times, which at that point was the second most on a quarterback in a single season. Luckily, the team finished their offensive line problems in 2001, allowing just 32 sacks combined. This was critical as they won their first game of the season to start 1-0. That was their only win of the season. The Panthers became the first team in the 16-game era to lose every single one of the remaining games after winning the opener, and George Seifert was fired as head coach. So, of course, after a 1-15 season, the Panthers have to go 7-9 in 2002, right? They just have to go 7-9. The secret was hiring Giants defensive coordinator John Fox as head coach. Under Fox, the Panthers' defense ranked second in total yards allowed, second in yards per play, and fifth in points allowed. They also had rookie phenom and Hall of Fame edge rusher Julius Peppers, who was one of the greatest last names an athlete can be blessed with. On the other side of the ball, the offense was complete garbage, resulting in the Panthers going from a 3-0 start to losing their next eight games before winning four of their last five. They also scored zero points against the Atlanta Falcons, a team they played twice a year. Sadly, in 2003, the defense got slightly worse, even though they ranked in the top 10 in many metrics. So what's the reason for the team finishing 11-5, knocking off the top-seeded Rams and Eagles, and reaching the Super Bowl? And losing, but still making it. Well, the arrival of NFL Europe legend Jake DeLome allowed the Panthers to produce a league-leading five fourth-quarter comebacks and seven game-winning drives, earning them the nickname Cardiac Cats. DeLome was also surrounded by great talent, with the excellent receiving duo of Steve Smith Sr. and Musa Muhammad, plus the arrival of Steven Davis, who rushed for 103 yards per game in 14 starts. The future was bright. So bright that it blinded the Panthers and destroyed their 2004 season. They had four running backs on injured reserve, and Steve Smith tore his ACL in the very first game, missing the entire year. Now, this did allow Moussa Muhammad to have a career year and a spot on the All-Pro team, first team even. 
This sadly wasn't enough, as a 1 in 7 start soon turned into a more dreadful 7 and 9 finish? What? We're seeing another pattern here under the John Fox era. In 2002, the Panthers finished 7 and 9. In 2003, they finished 11 and 5. In 2004, they finished 7 and 9. So if you're following along, the 2005 Panthers finished 11 and 5. So what happened this time? Despite letting Musa Muhammad walk, Steve Smith's return patched over the wound. And that's an understatement. He became just the third player in the Super Bowl era to lead a season in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns, earning himself the coveted Triple Crown. The team's defense finished second in yards per play and second in takeaways, helping propel them to their third NFC Championship appearance in their third ever playoff appearance. That is consistency. And then in 2006, they finished 8-8. Eight eight. But check this out, the way they finished 8-8 eight eight is perfectly balanced. They went loss, loss, win, 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 loss, loss, win, win, loss, 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 win, win. That's perfect. A win or loss was followed by a winning or losing streak every single time. Great work, Carolina. In 2007, Jake DeLone played just three games as he was forced to have Tommy John surgery. But despite that, the team raced off to a 4-2 start. The NFC South division winners would then finish the season at 9-7. But that wasn't the Panthers, who finished 7-9. In 2008, the Panthers got DeLone back healthy and finished 12-4 with the NFC second seed and a first-round bye for the first time in 12 seasons. The catalyst for the team's success, though, came in the run game, where running backs D'Angelo Williams and rookie Jonathan Stewart combined for over 2,300 rushing yards and 28 rushing touchdowns. Steve Smith also had over 1,400 receiving yards on a team that passed 400 times. Now, these are all great players, but we don't give enough credit to Jake DeLome. He's given the Panthers stable quarterback play for the first time in franchise history, and he'll go on to be one of the greatest undrafted quarterbacks of all time. His 34th birthday is also coming up, and he's planning on making it the best one yet. That sucks, because on the same day, he threw five interceptions while also losing a fumble in a divisional round loss to the Cardinals in the worst birthday anyone in the history of the world has ever had. But at least the Panthers finished 12-4. That was good enough for the front office, who signed DeLome to a five-year extension through 2014. It took one game in 2009 for the team to realize that might have been a mistake. DeLome turned the ball over five times in the season opener, and he would soon be released a year into his five-year extension. Starts of 0-3 and 4-7 and turned into an 8-8 eight eight finish for the Panthers. Wow. In 2010, they would again get off to a rocky start. They lost their first five games, and then they finished 2-14. This led to the team moving on from John Fox. And spoiler, this is the only time in franchise history where the team failed to score at least 200 points. But that's also good news because the team had the first overall pick, using it on generational quarterback Cam Newton, who guided the Panthers to a 6-10 finish while setting the rookie record for passing yardage, plus setting the overall record for rushing touchdowns from a quarterback. Newton also became the second ever quarterback to throw for at least 20 touchdowns while also rushing for at least 10. The sky was the limit for the Panthers under Cam Newton and new head coach Ron Rivera. In 2012, this team was going places. Like 7-9. To be fair, it had been five seasons since the Panthers finished 7-9, so they were way past due. And in typical Panthers fashion, they finished 7-9 after starting out 1-6. 2013 would be even worse as the team started out 1-3. You want to know how the season finished? 12-4, this team is stupid. What had helped was Defensive Player of the Year, Luke Keekley, who became the youngest player to win the award and the first player since Lawrence Taylor to win Defensive Rookie of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year in consecutive seasons. While the Panthers ended up losing to the 49ers in the divisional round, the future was bright. So bright that they went 7-8-1 in 2014. In 2015, the What? What's that? Wait, you're telling me the Panthers won the NFC South in 2014? At 7, 8, and 1? Sick. As a result, the Panthers became the last of the 32 teams to make the playoffs in consecutive seasons. They even won a playoff game against the Cardinals that no one cared about. I care about it, though. 
This team also had Walter Payne Man of the Year winner and linebacker Thomas Davis, a man who consistently played at an all-pro level despite tearing his ACL three different times. But in 2015, the team lost wide receiver Kelvin Benjamin, who became the 11th rookie receiver to hit 1,000 yards, to an ACL tear in July. If they could only win seven games of Benjamin, imagine how many they would win this year. 15. They went 15-1 and and made the Super Bowl. Out of seemingly complete nowhere, this Panthers team exploded with the top scoring offense, a defense first in takeaways, and an absolutely loaded roster. They sent 10 players to the Pro Bowl, with 8 players making the All-Pro team. This includes Cam Newton, who won both Offensive Player of the Year and MVP. To this day, he is also the only quarterback with a season of 30 touchdown passes and 10 touchdown runs. The Panthers would end up losing to the no-fly Broncos in the Super Bowl, but they were this good in 2015 without Kelvin Benjamin. Imagine how good they'd be with him in 2016. 6-10 Six At least tight end Greg Olson had another great year, as he became the first player at his position with three consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. So how would they follow up a disappointing 6-10 season? Dumb question. With an 11-5 one in 2017, yeah. The team lost a heartbreaker to the Saints in the opening round of the playoffs, but carried the positive momentum in 2018 with an impressive 6-2 start. Cam Newton was getting MVP consideration at this time, again, and the team used their great start to race to a finish of 7-9. Many Panthers fans will point to one play in the Week 10 Steelers game as the turning point for both the season and the franchise. A hit on Cam Newton from superstar edge rusher TJ Watt destroyed the rest of the quarterback season, eventually forcing him to sit out the last two games. In 2019, the team started 0-2, and Newton sat out the rest of the season with a Liz Frank injury. With Kyle Allen taking the helm, the team then won five of their next six games to stand out at 5-3 at the halfway point of the season. They then finished with a 5-11 record. Perhaps the sole silver lining for this team was Christian McCaffrey having a historic campaign, becoming the third ever player with both 1,000 yards rushing and receiving while finishing third in yards from scrimmage in a single season. But in many respects, this Panthers team was a goodbye to many beloved figures of the franchise. Cam Newton was released, Greg Olson was cut, Luke Keekley retired, Ron Rivera was fired, Dave Tepper was in his second season as the team's owner. 2020 soon hit, and Rivera's replacement was Baylor coach Matt Rule. Matt Rule, who looks like Guy Fieri's cousin, guided the Panthers to a 3-2 start before finishing 5-11 for the second straight season. It was the first time the team had ever finished with the exact same record in consecutive years. Fortunately, though, they wouldn't do that in 2021, because they finished 5-12. The team squandered a 3-0 start and their acquisitions of Teddy Bridgewater and Sam Darnold to replace Cam Newton both failed. So they brought back Cam Newton. It started off well, ended poorly. The next year, the Panthers started 1-4, resulting in Matt Rule being dismissed and replaced by interim coach Steve Wilkes. Former Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield was brought in before the season to solve the team's quarterback problem, but he was playing so poorly that they actually replaced him with Sam Darnold. Somehow, that nearly won the team the NFC South, and they finished with a 7-10 record. That was a terrible division. Enter 2023, and there's a good deal of hype surrounding the Panthers. Among many things, they have a great young receiver in DJ Moore, who's starting to come into his own and has been the team's best receiver for a while. That makes a perfect trade bait in a deal to the Bears to secure the number one overall pick, using said pick on Alabama quarterback Bryce Young. Young would be working with new head coach Frank Reich, who was the Panthers' first ever starting quarterback and had helped make the Colts a playoff contender while coaching in Indianapolis. Plus, Bucks quarterback Tom Brady finally retired, leaving the NFC South division wide open. So, the Panthers built off an impressive 7-10 season with a complete collapse at 2-15. Right now, I want to ask you a question. What did you learn from the 30 plus seasons we just went over? Well, besides the lack of Super Bowls, it's the complete lack of consecutive winning seasons. If we don't count the expansion Browns, the Carolina Panthers are the only team without consecutive winning seasons at any point in their history 
in NFL history. Now, if you don't at all mind, let's quickly go through every season once again so we can shout out the team's records. The Carolina Panthers went 7-9 in 1995, 12-4 in 1996, 7-9 in 1997, 4-12 in 1998, 8-8 eight eight in 1999, 7-9 in 2000. 1 and 15 in 2001, 7 and 9 in 2002, 11 and 5 in 2003, 7 and 9 in 2004, 11 and 5 in 2005, 8 and 8 in 2006, 7 and 9 in 2007, 12 and 4 in 2008, 8 and 8 in 2009, 2 and 14 in 2010, 6 and 10 in 2011, 7 and 9 in 2012, 12 and 4 in 2013, 7 8 and 1 in 2014, 15 and 1 in 2015, 6 and 10 in 2016, 11 and 5 in 2017, 7 and 9 in 2018, 5 and 11 in 2019, 5 and 11 in 2020, 5 and 12 in 2021, 7 and 10 in 2022, and 2 and 15 in 2023. The Carolina Panthers have mastered the art of inconsistency more than any NFL team that has ever existed. It's beautiful that a football team has been allowed to operate in the same way that they have. Though the team has walked on the walls of mediocrity for many, many years, they've also had several fantastic peaks. Peaks many NFL fan bases would love to have. All their first three playoff appearances came with an NFC title berth, including one in just their second year of existence. They've had two players win Defensive Rookie of the Year, one win Defensive Player of the Year, and one win MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. Keep Pounding is legitimately one of the NFL's best team slogans. And until Matt Rule, all of their head coaches had at least one season of 500 or better. This has not always been a mediocre to bad team, and the roller coaster levels of win loss fluctuation back this up. This is a special team, whether for the right or wrong reasons. Okay, a lot is heading in the wrong direction as of this date, but I'll leave you with this. Many teams can win Super Bowls, many teams can provide the worst decade of NFL play you will ever see, but no team plays year to year football like the Carolina Panthers.